Okay. What we're talking about is we're going to look at the five faculties. And by looking at the five faculties, we're also seeing the five powers. And we can write off this one the same way as we can write off the four steps of right effort and the four steps of right striving, okay? Four steps of right effort are your six R's. And when you call it right striving, then all of a sudden it becomes automatic and it's happening automatic. So that's what this one is. We know that. The five faculties, okay, that's a neat five, isn't it? There you go. These little guys, faith, energy, mindfulness. And this is the one that is different than what is being taught in the sterilized kind of mindfulness. Uh, listen, listen carefully to the two definitions. Meditation is observing the movement of mind's attention in order to see clearly how everything works. And if you want to extend it to the next length one, okay, in order to see the, understand the four noble truths, dependent origination and the three characteristics and how everything actually works. That's what it means, okay? That's what it was that he was attempting to do. And there's tons of evidence of that in the text. Okay, mindfulness is that observation skill. So mindfulness is an observation skill that is very precise. And it also has a quality, this kind of observation has a quality where it reminds you, you or remember, you, makes you remember something. What do you remember? You remember the mind's attention, okay? You remember to keep observing and you remember when something comes up that tries to stop you from watching, that is when you use the six Rs. And the content of hindrances doesn't have anything to do that's important to you. The only reason we say to you, uh, you know, um, the hindrances are your teachers. If one particular hindrance comes up again and again and again and again, you want to reflect on this and say, what is the core of this? Where is this coming from? In that way, it's showing you where your craving is most often, your personal craving, okay? But mindfulness helps us to remember to keep watching and see what comes up in our meditation as we go along and notice the hindrance. And when the hindrance comes up, it tells us, it, it reminds us, re, it uh, recollects that we should do the six R's. And the third piece is do all six steps. Don't try to do TWIM and come to me and say it doesn't work. When I ask you when the hindrance pulled you away and you felt it pulled you away, what did you do? And you say to me, well, I let it go. And I came right back. Well, that's not the six steps. Okay. Or you say to me, well, I released it, released it, released it. That's not it. Okay. I relaxed. I relaxed. I, that's not it. You see, it's like, I want the cake and there's six ingredients in the cake. Don't tell me I, I put the eggs in the bowl and then I didn't get a cake. <laughs> You know, or I put, I put the butter and the sugar in, but nothing happened. <laughs> you know, you have six ingredients for that cake mix. You have to put them in there and have them work in the six steps of this right effort. You can get away with one thing. I'll tell you something. You can get away with saying, okay, I've recognized I was pulled away. That's an action. I released it. It's an action. And then I relaxed my head, that's an action. I 
re-smiled, that's an action, right? As I was returning, that's an action, okay? And the re-smiling was bringing up the wholesome and then keeping it going and then returning, okay? Those are all five, our actions. To repeat the cycle over and over again, I can see where you might wanna let go of that one, <laughs> but it, it's a given. You're gonna do this every time something comes to pulls you away, that's the one. But the mindfulness is what your observation power. So we wanna be sure that we understand that we're not saying op mindfulness is the um, is concentrating on an object. This is not it. Observing. You're observing what happens when you are doing the working with the object of meditation. And what is the object of meditation? This came up a lot last week, so I want to throw this in here. The object of meditation, what is the purpose of an object of meditation in meditation? It was a home base. The object was a home base. It was the returning point. And the object we're giving you is feeling of loving kindness and sending the wish to your friend. So it's the feeling and the wish. That's It's a combination of feeling and the wish. But that's, I want to make something clear too. So when you're pulled over here, in order to come back, you come back to this and you'll stay here in this, in this bracket, you see? That's what you do. What I wanted to say was that the feeling, it's not important. This is what some people don't understand. They think we get the feeling going and we send the feeling to myself. Then I send the feeling to the person who is a spiritual friend. Then the feeling starts to diminish. Now, if the feeling diminishes and stops, we got a problem. Maybe we need to do some forgiveness before we do it. That's a block. However, it's natural, and we need to drum this into our minds. It is natural for this feeling that was like this big when you started, and it moves up to your head, okay? When it moves up to your head, and it becomes karuna, it's only going to be little. It's going to be little and it's going to be softer, not hard. It's going to be softer. So this is how we know we're shifting from the loving kindness. We're starting in the beginning and then this is the karuna up here. That's how we know this is happening. So let's try to remember that because there are a lot of people are disturbed by that right now. And they're saying, I just can't keep the feeling going hard. Or if they do determinations and they want to say, I will sit no higher than the first jhana or no, sit no higher than the, than the third jhana once they're into the jhanas, okay? And they're, they're asking to use that practice for a while, okay? If they're doing that, they don't need a strong feeling. They need a good intention, an intention to watch, an intention to observe. This is intention comes in intention to keep our mindfulness, our observation and awareness. Awareness falls in here, okay? So this was one, this is two, this is three, this is four is uh, mindfulness. This is the collectedness now. And this is another one where collectedness is a replacement word for concentration, but it's not eliminating concentration. I wanna make sure you understand that. This word collectedness is designating the concentration level and tone as productive, productive meditation. And this, by the way, is very funny. This one in the, I always remember this in the, you go to the meditation section in the Vasudhi Maga and the first three pages are talking about concentration. And the first page tells you what you're really trying to do is develop 
a productive level of concentration. He actually uses those words. I was really excited. I thought, oh, this is so good. Then I turned the page. <laughs> that was my mistake. And then it got into strong and this, and then it got into hindrances. Then we better destroy them, annihilate them, eradicate them, suppress them, subdue them, stop them. You see, we, we should personally try to do that. And I'm there, wait, wait, what's going on? What's going on? Then I began to understand why it took so long for them to work the way they were working with that meditation, because they couldn't get there if they were personally trying to be there and trying to make everything happen. There was too much description in this. When you get into it, what I kept finding was I kept finding there was too much personal stuff involved in this that I had to do. And it was like, no, no, this is like not going to be productive. And it wasn't, you see, wisdom. Now, if you're new to us, you need to understand our definition of wisdom. Um, the wisdom we're talking about is full and complete knowledge and understanding of the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape of all phenomena that arise in your mind. That's the best way to put it. And it has to be that you're examining it and you're, um, you're learning about this in a very impersonal way. So you're more a scientist than anything else when you're trying to look at this and examine it and see you know, what this collectedness was. The concentration we said collectedness because uh, last time I, I mentioned that different countries take concentration to mean different things and some think very, very hard concentration. And other countries are more reasonable to see that there are different levels of concentration in what you do. In music, for instance, there's different levels when you study voice. There's different levels of concentration and, and, and the enunciation and the sounding of the scales we do and all of that. So it's in everything you have these different levels. So we shouldn't think it's a hard, hard concentration because it won't work. Because as soon as we choose to make this, um, this object way, way, way important, then we're not gonna see all the other things that come up. And the other thing about this is when, if we were to, uh, if we're looking at this, you know, this um, object of meditation, very finely, our our sight from where we're sitting here, our our visual line gets like this, and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter, and we put a pressure on our brain. Remember, I was talking about neuroplasticity and what goes on and everything inside your brain. If your your vision is only like that, you won't see what happens from here, from here, coming across in front of you, or from up from below, from above, you're only gonna see in your mind that one particular object of meditation. Where does it take you? It takes you to absorption. What is absorption? It is a trance state. What is the definition of a trance state? We cannot comprehend or learn anything from the trance state. Part of this is um, learning to understand what samatha and vipassana actually mean. Samatha, it, it, the samatha isn't the concentration. Samatha means serenity and insight means, um, I'm sorry, vipassana means insights, discovering new things, you see, okay? So you don't want your vision to actually be like, this is one thing Bhante figured out. You see, he want his vision to be like this so that he has a peripheral vision, just like you and I have a peripheral vision. He want to be able to use the spiritual friend that's out here as someone to come back to, to be there with you. But he doesn't want it to be anything that's small or that you would concentrate. For I listened to a lecture today about you can concentrate on blue or concentrate on a yellow circle or this. All of these things were used traditionally before the Buddha was doing it, the ca casino type stuff. Anything to make your tunnel vision just like this so that it, it's so tiny and will take you into absorption as quickly as possible. But no one could get through. No one had the opening experience of the mind occurring. So this is about the balance of your concentration being important. The wisdom is 
keeping in mind how this experience works, the phenomena works as you are observing it. But you need to learn that the most important part of the dependent origination to be aware of in your practice is how are things happening from the contact and then the feeling and then the craving and the clinging. This is where this is where it's important, where this the sense door has the contact, the feeling arises, and then there is suddenly a change, and actually this stuff becomes really red. This stuff is really gets heated up. This is where the I comes in. I like it, I want it, or I don't like it, I don't want it. And the clinging is why is that? Because blah, 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 story, story, runaway mind, mental proliferation. That's where this is, the clinging. That's where that happens. Okay. All right. Faith is basically what you have faith that the Buddha actually found something. He actually did find a way out of suffering in daily life, but then a final version in Parinibbana. That's what he did. And then he decides to teach this to others. But instead of teaching them by telling him about it, he decides to go through the suttas and use them to say exactly, try to tell them what happened to him and get them to see it the way he saw it. So he teaches them a method of direct knowledge, which is knowledge and vision, knowing something by seeing it. That's what he does. And when you master knowledge and a vision of how things actually work. You've, you've grasped direct knowledge very securely, and then you go into the very deep states from there. That's how this works. But it's putting your faith in something that he really did find something, and he really had something important to show you, and trying making commitment to follow what he says first by itself, purely by his instructions. Then you say whether it works or not. But if you bring in other things to mix in with it and expect to get the same result, it doesn't work. That's what he's telling Vacha. Okay, and the energy level in you really has to do the energy for your mindfulness and the energy to continue your collectedness of and the energy for uh, realizing your wisdom as watching it correctly and everything. That's what it's about, your energy, keeping your energy up. We can broad base the definition and say, stay healthy, get enough sleep, eat correctly, exercise, all of that. That's true. But I'm talking about within the, the session itself, this is what it's talking about, okay? 